Hello, my name is Igor and welcome to my tech farm. In this video, I'd like to talk about the methods how to find out uh, how much filament we have on the spool. Is it enough for our next 3D printing project? Because probably I don't have to mention that uh, how frustrating is that you start with the printing and after several hours uh, on I don't know, 90% uh, it run out of the filament and uh, your printing is failed. You waste a lot of filaments and you have to restart uh, again. If you have a filament runout sensor, in that case uh, it may start the printing, but the question is if you have the same color of the filament and similar. Okay, so let's start. First, we have to find out how much filament uh, we need for our CD printing. Now, for this, good news is that uh, most popular slicer will give us this information. In Prusa slicer, but also in uh, Cura, we will get uh, the uh, length and the weight of the filament. Just to clear one thing, because I'm a teacher and uh, maybe it's professional deformation. The weight is not correct expression, because the weight is actually the force, gravity force, which the earth pulls the object uh, to it. This means the weight is different on earth, on moon, or, or maybe on Mars. And uh, actually on earth it may be different, if, even in elevator, during the accelerating or slowing down. Okay, so the correct expression is the mass, which unit is kilograms or grams in this case. But sometimes I will use the expression weight, it's used every day, actually we mean on the mass. Okay, back to our slicers. So we uh, get these information in mass or in length, but how accurate are these expressions, these values? Now the length is much more accurate compared to the mass, but how accurate? Well, uh, it can be very accurate, but it depends uh, from the, if we set correctly, the E-steps. If we extrude 100 millimeters, is it really 100 millimeters? Okay, so if we set this correctly, then the calculation for the length is quite uh, accurate, because uh, from this uh, we can calculate the volume. So the length multiplied the cross-section area of the circle of the filament, and we will get the volume, and uh, knowing the density, we can get the mass. The mass is calculated value thanks to, uh, for, to the density, but uh, now the accuracy of the, this value uh, depends uh, is if we correct uh, enter the density. Now in most slicer we will have predefined uh, materials for the PLA, PETG, ABS and similar, but uh, let's say a few times I'm doing this too, the ultimate cure, I want to print something quickly in ASA and uh, I have several printers and then don't have the profile for uh, ASA. I will use PLA, uh, I just change the temperature of the nozzle and the bed, reduce the part cooling fan and uh, that will work. Now the problem is here uh, with the mass because ASA is much lighter compared to the PLA. PLA and PTG has a very similar density uh, but ASA and ABS are lighter and uh, the difference in the error may be almost 20%. Okay, so uh, pay attention to this. In most cases uh, you can uh, use the preset profiles and there are no big difference between different types of the PLA, let's say, or, or different types of the ABS, but uh, there is quite a big difference between PTG, I think that's, uh, it has the biggest density, and ASA, it is one of the lightest of this uh, common material. Uh, I have a website about the density, you can check there if you don't have other information, but the best is if you can uh, check on the manufacturer's website the density of that filament and check is that correct in that uh, push slicer or the uh, automatic Acura. Okay, so we know how much filament we need for 3D printing project, but now we have to know how much filament we have on the spool. Is it enough for this project? Now, uh, well, there are several methods, but uh, the most popular and uh, most commonly used, I am using, is measuring the weight. So first uh, I have to measure the weight of the spool and the filament. So I can place it on the kitchen scale, or uh, if, let's say it is already in the printer, in that case uh, I can use some kind of hanging scale, in that case I don't have to take out the end of this filament from the printer. Maybe if I have a bottom style I don't want to destroy, every centimeter is important, so uh, I don't want to take it out from the printer, just for the measuring. Okay, so I measured the, the mass actually, um, but of course from this I have to subtract the mass of the spool. Okay, so now next steps is to find out 
uh, what is the weight of this uh, spool. If you are not new in this 3D printing, in that case uh, maybe you are not even watching this video, but uh, maybe you have some empty spools. Of course, you place the empty spool on the uh, scale, measure it and you can subtract it from the, this. Let's say you are new to 3D printing and you don't have the empty, empty spools yet. Well, in that case, uh, probably you have the same filament, maybe new filament from the same manufacturer, uh, which is not opened yet. In that case, place it uh, to the scale and measure that. You don't have to take it out from the packaging. It's, it's, uh, this will not deform too much the measuring. And uh, if it is correct, then in that case, from that weight, you have to uh, subtract the mass of the filament. Now pay attention, uh, sometimes it is not exactly one kilogram, for PTG and PLA usually it is, but sometimes we have some expensive filaments, uh, for example this is a Polymex PC and the net weight uh, of this filament is I think less, I'm not sure, maybe 800 grams, so you have to check that, uh, is this exactly one kilogram. Okay, so you have measured the empty spool and subtract the net weight of the filament and in that case you know the spool. Okay, the second method. Third method is to check on the website. Uh, most manufacturers, uh, not really, uh, let's say 50% of the manufacturer will give this information on the website. Fourth method, which is very rare, but I have a mission with this, you will see soon in my, one of my next videos is to check is this information on the website. It is so hard. I mean, uh, I checked uh, 20 different spools and uh, on one or two I find this information. For example, this is Polythera PLA and here we have information that this, uh, this spool is uh, 200 grams the weight. So big plus for the polymaker that have th they have this information on the spool. That's very rarely. And the fourth method, no, that was the fourth method, the fifth method is actually maybe to post a picture to some, I don't know, Facebook group or something like that and hopefully you will get these information in less than one hour. Okay, that was measuring the weight. Uh, there are some other methods too. Let's say uh, you have a smaller project, printing a Benchy. For Benchy I need approximately 5 meters of filament. Question, is this enough for printing energy? Probably yes, but if you are new in 3D printing, you are not sure. Now, uh, I noticed that approximately 50% of the spools uh, manufacturers place the scale. And here, uh, there is a scale, which can see through this hole, and the scale is in grams. Okay, so we can see, uh -huh, uh, I have here 800 grams on this spool, so definitely it is, it is enough for the bench. Or, uh, this is another example, here I have two scales, one is in grams and the other is the length in meters. So from here I can see I have here 210 meters of the filament approximately, so definitely I have 5 meters for printing a bench. Okay, so this scale is not super accurate, but can, you can use it uh, if you have some smaller object or, or there is quite a big difference. If I will see on this scale that I have approximately 220 grams and I need 200 grams for the project, that's a little bit close, so for this I need more accurate measuring. Okay, there is one more method which is not too accurate, but again, if the difference is quite big, then it can be used. So let's see, how much filament we have on this spool? There is no scale, let's say I don't know the weight of this uh, spool, I don't have any information about it. In that case, I can uh, calculate from the diameters. I can measure the minimum diameter, the actual diameter, at the maximum diameter, which is approximately, well, maybe I can show you here, usually uh, near these holes. So if I have these three diameters, the minimal diameter, the maximal diameter, and the current diameter, area of this ring to the ring of the new spool is proportional to, let's say, one kilogram and the actual mass of this. So you can see here the uh, equation for this. 
Okay, so but uh, don't forget. So this method uh, is not too accurate. So this can be used. That let's say if I calculate, I have here maybe 400 grams, and I need 100 grams for the project. Then I can use this method. But again, if I have here calculated, maybe that I have 300, and I need 290 grams for the project. In that case, again, I have to find out some more accurate measuring. Okay, let's play a small game. Try to guess how much filament is on this spool. I measure the diameters. The smallest diameter is uh, approximately 87 millimeters. Current diameter is approximately 140 millimeters. And the maximal, well, more accurate is to measure it here because usually it is uh, at the between bottom of this hole. And that's approximately 181 millimeters. So using this geometric calculation, uh, I get that I have uh, 477 grams of the filament on this pool. But now let's measure it, which is more accurate method. 665 grams together with the spool. I already measured the spool, it is 177 grams. And uh, this means that if I subtract these numbers, I have 488 grams on this spool. And if I compare these two uh, values, the error is a little bit more than 2%. <laughs> this is a little bit surprising, so this method is not that accurate, but uh, I don't know, plus minus 10% is quite acceptable. So in case that you need, uh, let's say, only 80% of the calculated value for the printing project, in that case, this method is acceptable. And one more method which is very important uh, because uh, if we have only a few loops uh, of the material of filament on the spool, we are very near that question, is it enough for our printing project or not? And if we can count the number of those loops, in that case we can calculate. Because the length is actually the diameter multiplied p, that's the perimeter, number, number of the loops. And this method is quite accurate until, until the filament is sitting on the spool near that minimal diameter. Of course, this method I will use if uh, the end of the filament is in CD printer. And uh, I don't want to take it out because especially there every centimeter is important. Especially with the Bowden style printers we have more waste materials or similar. One, uh, another method if only I have a uh, few meters left on the spool is basically to measure the length. I'm not using often that method, uh, I'm using it maybe if I have some sample filaments and in, in that case uh, I just measure it. Mm, pay attention that you have uh, clean hands uh, because if you uh, oily or something like that that's not too healthy on the filament because it may have a little bit more slip uh, in an extruder. Let's see. Uh, uh, how long is this filament sample? Is this enough for CD printing benchy? I know the bench is approximately 5 meters. And I'm not using a measuring tape for these things. If you are an adult person and your height is not changing anymore, use your body as a measurement. For example, I know that uh, if I hold the end of something here, uh, 1 meter is approximately below my ear. And uh, that's quite accurate, plus minus maybe 2 centimeters. So, one, two, three, four. So I know that this is not enough for my benchy because I need there five meters. Interesting, but there is one more method. I'm not using that, uh, actually I never used that method yet, but I want to mention everything I know. So uh, another method is uh, to write used filament on the spool. And for this, these carbon spools are very practical compared to this one. But of course, here you can place some sticker or you can use some, uh, I don't know, empty paper or something like that. Uh, but on carbon spool, you can use here. And every time when you're printing something, write on that uh, carbon spool uh, how, many, how much filament is used. Uh, of course, this works until uh, you don't have fair print or something like that, or you don't do some calibration and similar. Uh, as I mentioned, that's one of the methods too, but I'm not using that method. Of course, uh, very practical is something that I mentioned earlier on the beginning of this video, is to use the filament runout sensor, uh, but uh, 
that sometimes may be risky, of course. Uh, yes, we have a filament runoff sensor, but even then we are not happy if we run out of the filament of 95%, because question is if we have the same color of the filament, or uh, sometimes uh, the resuming of the printing is not really success. In my case, I noticed in 80%, yes, it works, but uh, sometimes um, I have some oozing or something like that, and when it, I want to resume the printing, uh, it sometimes hit the object and sometimes it can move so it's it's a little bit risky so it's better to avoid that okay so that was uh, my experience i try to share everything i know about this uh, method so uh, to determine how much uh, filament we have on the spool if you have some other method you know uh, write me a line down in the comment section thank you for watching and happy printing